Dash here with the game recapped. Today, I'm going to show a 1996 action role-playing game called Diablo. Take this spoiler warning, it's dangerous to go alone. A warrior returns to his hometown of Tristram after surviving a disastrous war with the neighboring nation. Upon entering the town, the warrior speaks to the local tavern owner, who informs him of the recent events that have led to the town being deserted. Apparently, mysterious dark riders destroyed the village. Many people were cut down where they stood, and those who took up arms were slain or dragged away to become slaves, or worse. The church at the edge of the town has been desecrated and is being used for dark rituals. The screams that echo in the night are inhuman, but some of the townsfolk may yet survive. Ogden then urges the hero to follow the path that lies between his tavern and the blacksmith shop to find the church and save who he can. The warrior is then met with two other traveling heroes looking to aid him in clearing the church of the evil. The first introduces herself as a rogue named Morena. The second was a Vigeri sorcerer named Jazareth. And the warrior himself is revealed to be Ulbricht's brother, Prince Aiden and all three are playable classes in the game of Diablo. Following Ogden's instructions, Aiden happens upon a wounded townsman in front of the church. The man confirms that some evil had taken root in the town's cathedral, and to confront it, the Archbishop Lazarus led a group of villagers into the structure in order to rescue Leoric's missing son, Albrecht. He then warns the warrior the remaining villagers were set upon by a demon known as the Butcher, and that the townsfolk were betrayed by the bastard Lazarus, few of which returned to tell the tale. Entering the church, Aiden, sensing the evil that has befallen the hallowed grounds, remarks that the sanctity of the place had been failed, and is immediately set upon by a variety of hellspawn, looking to defend their new dark lair from unwanted interlopers. Heading deeper into the church's sublevels, Aiden then finds a single room that is covered in gore and littered with the bodies of the fallen townsfolk, waiting inside for fresh meat is the fabled Butcher, a huge overlord demon, brandishing a large cleaver and boasting in human speed. The Butcher nearly overwhelms the heroes, but is eventually destroyed and his cleaver reclaimed. The missing prince is nowhere to be found. Upon surfacing from the labyrinth, the innkeeper Ogden once again beckons to the heroes. He then explains, some months ago, when King Leoric's son, Prince Ulbricht, was kidnapped, the king went into a rage and scoured the village for his missing child. With each passing day, Leoric seemed to slip deeper into madness. He sought to blame innocent townsfolk for the boy's disappearance and had them brutally executed. Less than half of the townsfolk survived his insanity. The king's knights and priests tried to placate him, but he turned against them, and sadly, they were forced to kill him. With his dying breath, the king called down a terrible curse upon his former followers. He vowed that they would serve him in darkness forever. Their former king has since risen from his eternal sleep and now commands a legion of undead minions within the labyrinth. His body was buried in a tomb three levels beneath the cathedral. Ogden, aware of the burdens he asks, urges the heroes to put Leoric's soul at ease by destroying his now cursed form. On level three of the cathedral, the heroes find an entrance to Leoric's tomb that has statues of the late king adjacent to the entrance. Inside the tomb, an army of undead emerge, now in the service of the re-risen Leoric. Bearing no semblance to the once good man he was, Leoric's new visage is that of a giant skeleton, wielding a huge two-handed sword and still wearing his crown in death. After committing patricide, Aiden bids his father's soul to rest well and vows to find his lost brother, Albrecht. The warrior then descends further through the sublevels of the labyrinth, questing on the behalf of the scattered townsfolk, destroying much of the demon presence below. First in the catacombs underneath the church, followed by a lava-filled cave, and then, finally, a crack to hell it appears, and the land seemed to warp into an outpost of hell itself. On the 15th level of hell, and heavily guarded, is the Staff of Lazarus. Aiden then learns from the town's resident scholar, Deki Kane, that the staff can be used to track Lazarus back to his lair where he escaped, and 
perhaps save the young Prince Ulbricht before he is sacrificed. Cain then reveals that he is part of an ancient order called the Horodrum, and that they fought an ancient evil, and he believes that the evil has once again been loosed upon the world. Back on level 15 in the outskirts of hell, a red portal appears above a pentagram, and when stepped inside, a brief cutscene plays showing that the heroes have traveled to Lazarus's unholy altar. After unlocking the doors to Lazarus's inner sanctum, which are largely protected by succubi, Aiden confronts Lazarus, who taunts the hero above an altar where a boy is being brutally sacrificed to Lazarus's dark master. Killing Lazarus and returning to Cain, he says the boy wasn't Ulbricht, but the prince is still in danger. The dark master of which Lazarus spoke of is none other than Diablo, the Lord of Terror, once imprisoned in a labyrinth many centuries ago. He has since broken free and now seeks to sow chaos in the realm of mankind. Heading back to hell, Aiden finds the pentagram which Lazarus's portal sat has now opened to the entrance to level 16 in the lair of Diablo himself. Once inside, the heroes see that it is the threshold of hell and filled with advocates and blood knights. Once in the service of Leoric, and now twisted into the bidding of their dark master, including the unique knight, Sir Gorash. After felling a small army of foul demons, the party of heroes faced the Lord of Terror in his lair. But Ulbricht is nowhere in sight. Diablo's lair is a realm fitted for the Lord of Terror, as not only were the heroes struggle physical, but mental as well. The demon forced Aiden to relive his worst nightmares, his greatest failures, and his fears that he would never live up to the expectations of his late father. But driven by the belief that his brother could still be saved, Aiden pressed on, and he and his companions wore the demon down until ultimately Aiden struck the final blow. The demon bellowed a god-awful death cry that was said to be heard even by the residents of Tristram above, blood pouring from the gaping wound in its chest, and the Lord of Terror was no more. But as the party gathered around its corpse and dug out the soul stone from Diablo's head, which contained its essence, it was then revealed to the party that Diablo had been using Ulbricht as his host. Deckard Cain would later speculate that Aiden, seeing his brother's body before him, would have shattered his mind. Regardless, whatever may have run through Aiden's head, there was one last loose end. Diablo's soul stone. Broken by Lazarus, it would no longer contain the demon indefinitely. Believing he could contain Diablo's essence, Prince Aiden plunged the soul stone into his own forehead. Blood filled his vision, the whispers of the damned echoed in his ears, and Aiden could feel Diablo himself clawing his way up from the dark recesses of his soul. But he had done it. Diablo had once again been contained for now. since I left the town of Tristram behind me. Since then, I've tried to forget the terrors I beheld beneath the cold earth, and the twisted nightmares that have haunted my every waking moment. There's something dark within me now. I can feel it, driving me towards the east, assuring me that my salvation lies within the ruins of ancient kingdoms. Though I know the way, I know not what perils will arise to hinder my journey. And as I pass through the first gate, I know that the better part of my soul will remain behind. Forever. <laughs> 